Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm hoping you guys are all having a fantastic day. So today's upload is gonna be a uh, video that is actually getting recorded uh, later. It's, it's getting recorded at, uh, well, fairly late, you can see 12.25 a.m. And I just wanted to get this video in right now because I won't have time to record a video tomorrow. So I decided to do it now. And uh, that's why the model run is a little bit older. And you can see it's 00Z Sunday instead of uh, being 6 or 12Z, which it would be um, if I recorded it tomorrow. So, uh, you know, if you want to subscribe to this YouTube channel, you could do, uh, consider doing that. I'm not making you do this. I am just uh, c telling you to consider, uh, after you watch this whole video, consider subscribing to this channel. Just to keep it in the, in the back of your head if you really want to. Uh, subscribe you could do so but uh, thank you for that so the, what I wanted to talk about is basically uh, this uh, this this whole long-range outlook thing with the cold temperatures in the forecast and how many people are saying that won't happen well uh, obviously the intensity has decreased of, of the coldness so-called it's not really gonna be cold it's just below average um, you know it would have to be ridiculously cold or below average to classify as cold in summer but if you you know i just wanted to sh demonstrate to you guys that uh even the new, new newer model runs that are coming in uh zero zero z sunday uh this is this is the newest one right now it just came in fully couple of i would say even 15 to 20 minutes ago and you can see that if we go to two meter temperature uh anom or two meter temperature anomaly which is uh, the anomaly of uh it, the, the temperature at two meters and the um, the anomaly, the, the little scales are in Celsius, and you can see that uh, in terms of cold, uh, right now there's a little bit of chilliness across the, the central plains, and right now we're feeling the chill. I posted a little post today earlier on on my YouTube channel saying, uh, you know, that it's, you know, you know, are you feeling the chill? Because here it was 75 degrees. It dropped down 15 degrees in uh, in an hour or two. So it definitely cooled down and it was so nice. Right now we have the windows open, everything is breathing finally. And we were expecting more of them. You can see Sunday also chilly across most of the country, or a good chunk of the country. Uh, so is Monday if we go to Tuesday. Uh, it's still, you know, you can see fairly nice and uh, cool and it just this is just goes on and on and considering the uh couple of days are going to be a little bit warmer wednesday is the first warm day but then notice another wave of chillier air comes through and this uh brings in chillier air friday another chill and you get the point there's uh you know pretty chilly air depending on where you live obviously uh it seems as of by next weekend it's only a concentrated area in the central plains and it seems or in the central u.s while uh, it's warm everywhere else, but you know, not for too long. You can see another wave comes through, and this could uh, again bring temperatures down even in a more significant way and more significant manner. So uh, I want to show you this. Not only the anomalies, I, uh, I would also like to show you some of these. <laughs> <clears throat> so I would also like to show you a new feature, or it's a it's an old feature, but it's a new feature I'm using. Uh, you know, I've been I showed it many times before on his channel, but I've gained a mass amount of subscribers recently, so I'd want like to uh, show everybody this. It's on tropical tidbits. If you go down to uh, relative humidity. And it basically, you know, you need to know a few things, uh, but they're very basic. And it's that with cool air usually comes drier weather, and the uh, the relative humidity in the air will go down, go down, which is towards zero, obviously. And then if it's uh, more uh, a warm, air, warmer air mass, especially during the summer, because during the winter not so much does humidity directly correlate with a warmer air mass, since it's you know the warm up verbal parentheses over that is because it's it gets up to 45 degrees and that's, that's still not enough to really get the humidity in but when it warms up during the summer usually it's 90 100 and the humidity skyrockets so you could tell basically where it's going to be above, below average and above average based on the humidity that's a very uh 
useful feature because you, you know especially during the summer like i explained it gets with that cooler air there's drier air and look at that right now much of the country is seeing some cooler air which is in turn producing some low humidity readings or at least below average and you could see that uh or yeah just not this isn't an anomaly this is just uh you know here is around average 50 to 55 and then here it gets more humid and here it's extremely humid the blue here it's extremely dry across the 5 to 15 range uh, which is in percents and you can see that these waves of cool of uh these waves of drier air keep coming in with lower humidity which in, in terms are uh, obviously lower uh temperatures but then notice how some of this warm air starts getting pumped in uh, there could be a tropical depression developing across into uh, the southeast which we'll have to keep an eye on but you can see these thunderstorms do pump in quite a bit of humidity and they could produce uh you know downpours and obviously bring the temperatures up but the overall pattern seems to be that uh, a drier less humid air mass and then obviously towards the end of that forecasting period i showed you in hour 300 there was a big cool down where look at this uh, much drier air much drier air and this in turn leads to obviously uh, goes directly it's a direct variation with the cold air or cooler air so uh you know a very interesting and unique pattern setting up because during during the summer we usually uh don't uh, don't see typically such dry air masses you know there's just so much moisture from the gulf of mexico that is available all the oceans are available or i should say both the oceans the pacific and the atlantic from the pacific i mean you might not think that moisture could travel all the way to maine from california the pacific ocean but it does so in a very great fashion and sometimes it gets aided with uh the gulf of mexico moisture or the atlantic ocean from the east coast and the south and this usually spawns big thunderstorms especially around the july august time frame big thunderstorms uh, lots of humidity because where thunderstorms are usually that you know uh, provides humidity uh, and big storms and you can see here's a storm right there a little bit above average humidity but then uh, there's a cooler air mass behind it and uh, you can see that's probably if we were to go to the two meter temperature anomalies of course it's cooler right there because that's just how it is it's very interesting during the winter it's a little bit harder to uh, do so because uh, the air masses are naturally drier and uh it's you know the two meter temperature anomaly works great during the winter but the humidity one is a little bit harder because it, air masses are naturally drier i wanted to quickly point something out if we go to a uh, six to ten day outlook of the climate prediction center uh we could see that they're showing above a or above average conditions for <clears throat> for quite a good chunk of the country and I obviously don't agree with this. I don't think they've been on uh, onto anything fairly at all. You know, frankly, I mean, they've been off pretty greatly. They were showing no signs of a cool off uh, right now, and right now again, obviously, it already happened. So that's in our history, and there are many people already feeling the chill, and they didn't show any signs of that, which isn't you know isn't it, i mean they have a lot of things on our hand this is only one part of their organization but it's still you know many people rely on this and you can see below average uh precip as well precip i gotta give it to them it's gonna be very hard to predict precip is much harder to predict the temperatures but still it kind of frustrates me because they're always a little bit biased towards the warmer temperatures and if we look to the 8 to 14 day outlook still above average which again i strongly don't agree with but We'll just have to see what um, what actually happens, which, in my opinion, will be cooler and drier temperatures. Notice also how there is a below average air mass or precip area across the central U.S. Yet again, so uh, you know, definitely uh, something to keep an eye on for, something to keep track of. Uh, you know, it's I always try competing with, I guess, the Climate Prediction Center, see who could do better job of forecasting. And, you know, it's, it goes either way. Sometimes they're more cl closer to what actually happens. Sometimes I'm more closer. And uh, though I think this time around they're really misrepresenting the, the cool weather that will be occurring. I mean, if we go to the 2 meter temperature shaded, uh, we could see that the temperatures, you know, they're going to be warm. Obviously, it's summer. It would have to be insanely cold for them to be below average. But you could see that um, still 70s and 80s and 90s are still occurring in hundreds obviously but notice how there's 70s in the central region here which is a bit cooler and uh an interesting thing i actually learned a couple 
um, months ago is that uh, the, the most heated time of the year for a lot of locations in the Midwest and I'm not sure about the West but I know about the Midwest and the East is around the July 14th July 15th time frame not actually around the summer solstice which is something to keep in mind so uh, the video will pause in a couple of seconds due to me going over the 10 minute limit and we are back guys so I do apologize about that it happens every time well, when we go over 10 minutes I'll have to buy the paid version for this a recording software and if we uh, you know as I mentioned July 14th 15th is usually the, the hottest time frame of for the Midwest and look uh, 70s and 80s which you know you may be like okay that's warm what do you want but based on the averages it's not uh, that's that's still below average 82 the average is around say 85 so three degrees below average is that significant no but it's below average and that's the point and notice also how it gets pretty uh, chilly across portions of UP of Michigan next uh, in two weeks I think Friday July 19th I mean some 40s maybe some upper 30s which look 37 around James Bay which is granted very far to the north but still um, usually you know winter and fall start coming from the north and creeping on you so uh, th that's the first place to look for for winter and some cool temperatures so thank you guys so much for watching consider subscribing to this channel consider liking this video and i'll catch you guys in the next episode see ya bye